I don't really care if the Star League is ever re-established. I'm more concerned with today. And today it is obvious that without the wisdom of Alexander Kerensky and the leadership of General Nicholas, we are little more than dirt-hugging, backstabbing barbarians. The vision of the two Kerenskys is a reason we have survived until now. And as long as I can still pilot a mech, pick up a pistol, or even spit in someone's eye, I will defend it. The Vixen holds a unique place in the pantheon of clan second line battle mechs. By the time the first units of this 30 ton battle mech left the production line in 2954, it had long been surpassed in the eyes of the clans by Omnimech technology. While this is not an uncommon story for the clan second liners in 2C designs, the Vixen had a foot in both worlds. While the mech did have a standard factory loadout, elements of the design made for easy retrofitting and the main weapon in the right arm could be swapped out with very little effort. It was a fast, agile, flexible, and best of all, inexpensive battle mech, which would see widespread use across the clans and eventually even spotted in the militaries of the inner sphere and periphery nations. The Vixen, or Incubus as the clans called it, is an interesting case for streamlined design and production. When the Steel Vipers conceived the Vixen, they were looking to gain advantage over the other clans who were all retooling their production lines for Omnimex. Instead of following suit full bore, resources were also spent on this light battle mech with remarkable firepower and speed. It became obvious as the process moved forward that the Steel Vipers had a solid mech on their hands with the Vixen. Built around a Light Force 270XL engine using LM3 Endo Steel for its core structure, the Vixen is built with speed in mind. With a maximum speed of 151 km per hour, it can chase down most other battle mechs on the field. The 5.5 tons of forging FF01 ferrofibrous armor provide a significant amount of protection for a 30 ton battle mech. For comparison, the Kit Fox only has 4 tons allotted to armor. Finally, the Comsat 1 communication system and Delta 6 sensor suite were chosen for the Vixen as it can keep up with the stresses of rapid and agile movement. The original Vixen was armed with a Calibri Delta Series large pulse laser, which gives the mech an accurate and powerful primary weapon, which immediately allows it to hit above its weight. It is also partially modular and held in the mech's right hand, which allows for quick swapping in case of damage or even exchanging it with alternate weapon types. It's an example of how the Vixen has kind of a toe in the Omnimech camp. Now that large pulse laser is backed up with a pair of Series 2B ER medium lasers located in the right and left torsos. They offer good secondary punch at the mid and short ranges. Finally, a quartet of machine guns across the left and right torsos gives the Vixen a good opportunity to tear up infantry units, battle armor, and even crit seek against battle max at close range. It's also worth noting the Vixen has that jettison capable weapon quirk, which allows the mech to drop that right arm mounted weapon. Though the Vixen had already been in production for a century before the beginning of the clan invasion, the mech was only very rarely encountered. Some Inner Sphere intel sources believed that it was either not popular with clan warriors, even second line forces, or there was some other reason. As it turned out, the reality is all the more mundane and even cliche, in that the mech became popular for dueling in augmented trials between clan warriors, and it was almost never found anywhere near a frontline conflict. Add in the fact that there were other options like the Adder and the Battle Cobra in the 30 ton weight category, and it's not surprising that the second line Vixen just wasn't often encountered. However, when the Inner Sphere forces ran into the Vixen, they tended to remember it. If they survived, of course. Following the debacle at Tukiad, the participating clans faced a supply crunch of key components and especially Omnimech parts. Existing production lines of second line mechs were able to churn out replacements at a faster rate than their Omnimech counterparts. The end result was that the Vixen, along with many other rare mech designs, were an increasing problem for Inner Sphere forces seeking to capitalize on the clan weaknesses. The Vixen was able to move quickly, rapidly take advantage of weak positions, and that large pulse laser definitely left an impression. During the raid by a Capellan Ijori warrior house on the planet Goat Path in 3060, the Steel Vipers were caught off guard. They struggled to hold back the Capellans, though warriors piloting Vixens were able to harass them incessantly and avoided return fire. The Steel Vipers would retain control of Goat Path, though they would end up losing it to the Jade Falcons during the Hegira War of 3061. By the 3060s, Vixens were being produced at two locations. The first was in the extensive Tokasha Mechworks Alpha Complex located on Tokasha in the Weibenborn Morass 
and it was originally set up by the Hell's Horses following the colonization of the planet by Clan Mongoose way back in 2840, but it would be later claimed by Clan Ghost Bear in a fierce trial of possession. During the trial, the Hell's Horses were on the verge of winning when the Ghost Bear Khan, Kilborn Jorgensen, was killed in battle. Instead of breaking, the bears rallied, first in defense of the fallen Khan in his battle armor, and then sweeping over the stunned Hell's Horses. Fighting was fierce, and though much of the fighting took place in and around the mech-producing complex, it survived the fray. While not well known outside of the clans involved, the battle for the Mechworks Alpha would fundamentally change both Clan Hell's Horses and Clan Ghost Bear. The horses were forced to necessarily shift their focus of the military away from battle mechs, while the Ghost Bears were now much better off after procuring more Omnimech technology and the ability to produce mechs like the Vixen, Nova, Gargoyle, Bane, and Stone Rhino. The Hell's Horses did eventually retake Takasha Mechworks Alpha, and when they did, they also updated the Vixen with a new variant we'll cover later in this video. We went off on a tangent there for a second, sorry. The second Vixen production line was found on what is called the CSF Titanic Mobile Production Facility, which I think is a Clan Seafox facility, though there seems to be very little, if any, information on it beside the reference in the technical readout. Ongoing Vixen production within the Inner Sphere is assumed to be coming from wherever this mobile facility is located. Through the Dark Age and into the Ill Clan era, the Vixen has become more popular. There have been some variants produced, but through them all there seems to be an allure to the mech which draws mech warriors. Maybe it's the sleek design, maybe it's the name. It has even found legs in the gladiatorial games on Solaris. One news report included a description of a mech warrior named Derek Leung who went up against a vixen in his Mad Cat 3 in the streets of Solaris City in a violent culmination of a lover's quarrel. The vixen ended up winning that brawl. We are going to go through the variants of the Vixen, though it's going to look a little random as the numbering is complete chaos. We're going to stick to the year the mechs were introduced, which is the best and most logical as it tends to show the progression of technology over time. With that being said, let's talk about the Vixen 7. Introduced in 2961, the Vixen 7 is almost identical to the original loadout, except the large pulse laser in the right arm is replaced with an Ultra AC-2. In what I can only assume was a command decision by some out-of-touch clan officer who had no idea what he or she was doing, the removal of one of the best weapons in the clan arsenal at the time with one of the worst is absolutely baffling. This variant hurts me. Let's never speak of it again. In a slightly more sane decision, the Vixen 8 was introduced in 2962 with an LRM-20 installed into the right arm in place of the large pulse laser. The single ton of ammunition for the launcher provided six shots before the mech warrior would have to either retreat to rearm or rely upon the two ER medium lasers and four machine guns. While definitely better than the version we're not going to speak of again, it's still pretty weak. However, it could theoretically serve a purpose if the battlefield commander needed as much LRM fire on a target as possible and you just had a bunch of vixens laying around. At the very least, it highlights the ability to swap that right arm main weapon when needed. In 2998, the Vixen 2 tried again with the main weapon swap from a large pulse laser to an ER PPC. While this does extend the range a bit and provides a substantial damage increase, it comes at the cost of accuracy and heat generation. The Vixen's 10 double heat sinks can handle the firing of the ER PPC along with one of the two ER medium lasers, but it's right on the line. Adding in a second ER medium laser isn't the end of the world, but doing it every turn will quickly run the Vixen 2 deep into the red. Thankfully, the machine guns don't generate heat, so you can just fire them every turn, even if you're not out of a target. Just clear the jungle like your Jesse Ventura in Predator. Now, before your eyes glaze over with boredom, behold the arrival of the Vixen 3 in 3025. The large laser is once again sacrificed like a goat in a billionaire's Caribbean altar ceremony. In its place, a streak SRM-6 is added to the right arm, and the ER medium lasers are swapped out for a pair of medium pulse lasers. While losing the large pulse laser still hurts a bit, I can see the value in giving up the range for a much more potent short-range punch. This is the first of the variants that makes a lot of sense to me, as it would make a nasty hunter of other light mechs with this loadout and the mech's ability to run 14 hexes. The Vixen 3 has the mech frog seal of approval. The Vixen 4 arrives in 3065, so I bet you can guess what new technology it carries. If you were thinking ER large pulse lasers, you'd be wrong, but I appreciate the effort. In fact, the Vixen 4 removes all of the original weaponry and instead installs a large heavy laser in the right arm. Two medium pulse lasers back it up in the usual left and right torso locations, along with two micro pulse lasers and a pair of ER micro lasers. 
Knowing that the large heavy laser generates 18 heat just on its own, while the Vixen still only has the 10 double heat sinks, you might be forgiven for thinking this variant is built as a joke in order to cook overzealous mech warriors alive in their cockpits. However, you would only be partially correct. In fact, when the Hell's Horses designed the Vixen 4, it was intended for use in trials where some or even most of the lasers were disabled in order to balance fights that often included tanks and battle armor in the mechs. On the battlefield, the mech was often deployed along with vehicles, protomechs, and infantry as heavy support with a litany of light lasers. The large heavy laser was an insurance policy for larger threats. Apparently, the Vixen 4 was impressive enough to the Ice Hellions that they ended up coming up with their own variant. The Vixen 5 keeps the two ER medium lasers from the original, but downgrades the machine guns to the lighter versions. Instead of a large pulse laser in the right arm, they went with an advanced tactical missile 6 system with two tons of ammo in the right arm. While it is lacking that third ton to achieve true flexibility of the ATM system, it at least gets partial credit for the effort. If you're a big fan of the ATM systems, I could see how the Vixen 5 could be appealing, but I keep going back to the original loadout and pointing at that large pulse laser as the problem that didn't need fixing. Now we're finally at the Ill Clan era variant portion of the broadcast where things start to go completely off the rails. First of all, the Vixen 9 has been upgraded to reflective armor, which is going to improve performance against incoming fire from energy weaponry. Additionally, the engine was swapped out for an XXL version, which buys a little bit of weight at the cost of making the destruction of either the left or right torsos a kill shot on the Vixen. The weapons are completely unique from any previous variant. The right arm features an ER large pulse laser, which is backed up by an ER medium pulse laser in each of the left and right torsos. Finally, a trio of AP Gauss rifles are going to help with clearing out infantry or light vehicles that wander too close. While the ER versions of the Pulse Lasers are neat for giving a little bit more range to the Vixen, and the AP Gauss Rifles are much better at clearing out infantry than the machine guns, the price paid with the inclusion of that XXL engine is too much for me to ignore. For a 30-ton mech that's already living life just one ER PPC or Gauss Rifle slug away from Oblivion, making the mech even more vulnerable to incoming fire does not justify the bulked-up weaponry. It's a fancy version of a mech that really didn't need it. Finally, because vanity has no limits, I decided to come up with a certified useful mech frog variant of the Vixen. It's based on the original build, so no fancy armor or XXL engines to be found. The mech's weaponry is split between two medium pulse lasers in the right arm and two streak SRM-2s in the left torso. A small pulse laser in the head finishes off the offensive weaponry. In order to improve the mech's lifespan, I also included an anti-missile system in the right torso. While obviously the loss of the large pulse laser is tragic, what I think I've built here is a nasty light mech, tank, or infantry hunter, which can really take advantage of its unmatched speed to mess up someone's planned gun line. It's just dangerous enough that you can't ignore it, and that creates opportunities for whatever allies the Vixen has on the battlefield to capitalize on the chaos. Now before we head off into the sunset here, we do need to mention the Incubus 2. This Hell's Horses prototype mech was actually a team effort with the Wolves in Exile. They sought to build upon the success of the Incubus, or Vixen, by doubling down on mobility even at the cost of offensive power. The addition of Clan Light Series Mark II jump jets and a partial wing allowed the mech to leap up to 240 meters at a time and resulted in a minus three heat on turns the partial wings were used while in a standard atmosphere. With the slightly downgraded 240XL engine, the final result for the Incubus II was a top run speed of 12 hexes or 129 kilometers per hour and a jump distance of 10 hexes, which is impressive by any metric. As far as weapons go, the mech is a lacking. There are two ER medium pulse lasers, which are good for their accuracy and fair distance up to 14 hexes, but that's it as far as weaponry goes. Now it does have a light active probe and a laser anti-missile system, which help with its obvious scouting potential, but this Vixen lacks bite for sure. There is hope, however, if you're looking for a slightly different setup as the mech's factory also produces the equivalent of Omnimech pods with different weapons including the Streak LRM-5, one with three AP Gauss rifles, and even one with a pair of medium chemical lasers. It's quite interesting if a battlefield commander is looking to invest heavily in one battle mech. Overall, if you're looking for a scouting mech that can leap great distances over uneven terrain, the Incubus 2 may be a good option for you. So. Why do we love the Vixen, or Incubus, whichever you prefer? It's a good example of an effective use of clan technology to create a stylish and effective battle mech. 
The Vixen was relatively inexpensive, simple to build, and yet could perform as well as its Omnimech peers. While being able to travel 14 hexes without the need of a mask or any other fancy technology makes for a wild card situation on the tabletop, which helps prevent the slowly marching assault mechs from sucking up all the fun on the battlefield. Do you have a favorite variant of the Vixen Incubus? Have you run into one in-game? And if you did, how did it work out? Let me know in the comments, we'll keep the discussion going. Thank you as always for hitting all the various buttons so that YouTube's algorithm stays happy with me and recommends the videos to new people. We're back on target to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, barring any major issues like being mauled by a grizzly. If you want to and are able to swing it, channel memberships are the best way to toss a couple of bucks toward creators that you want to directly support for creating the kind of content you want to see more on the platform. An additional thanks to those of you who are already on board, and you are why I say we when I discuss the channel. Take care, until we meet again, go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.